the Sunday scriptures this morning. Hey, Ron, you find that scripture the baptism of John. In other words, in judgment to
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus made the most of them. He said, when they get the scripture, he opened to the passage in Isaiah, where it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has gone to me to preach the gospel. He has sent me to heal the broken heart of so and so forth. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So then he got finished. So he closed the book. I sat down. Big no no. And it says the eyes of everybody in this temple was fastened upon him. It said, This day are these words fulfilled in your ears. What are you saying? Me's here. You're talking about me and I'm here. You think of that impact moment, that Kodak moment, that it said, hey, this was the, the people should have demanded it. They said, this is this Messiah. He just said, you guys wrote it and told all of us that that's me. But why is he teaching the next Sunday? Why is he in charge of the temple? Why is he not the high priest? Nobody did. Right? So no, they got to face the music. When he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him and see what he was teaching and said, but what authority does all these things? They do, they do what he's teaching. There's some folks you don't want to call on the carpet in public. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> the guys will say to you, you don't say in private, they're, they're, they're going to expose you, right? You want to make sure you're right, right? Because but don't, don't do it in public because they're good, you, know, you just don't want to do it in public. <laughs> they got them in public. I can see the chief priests and the others become marching up their own time. By what authority do us all these things? What things? Wrecking the temple and then teaching. Who gave the authority to teach him here? To talk to that prophet. By what authority do us all these things? And who gave me this authority? As to say, we didn't give it. We got this authority. There were priesthood who totally forgot about the fact they're working for God. He was a part of the equation. And just answer. So he's in charge. He's, he, he got the teacher chair. Right? He can ask, ask her, just like that movie again, Pretty Woman. When she asked for, when the University of Gary asked for directions. And she said, five dollars. He said, why should I give you $5 to get directions? He said, because I ain't lost. <laughs> Love that body. He wasn't lost. So you got the right to ask the question. Love them. I will also ask you one thing. Since you're going to do this in public. But if you tell me, if you tell me, I ain't likewise will tell you about what authority. I do these things. Here we go. These words will I require of him. The baptism of John, which was it, from heaven or men? The message of the dead and coming to the Lord, the time and all that kind of stuff, was that from heaven or men? He's going to hit that last day's church with that question. Did somebody make this message up, or did it come from the prophet, that prophet in heaven, give us the prophets on earth, or was it an earthly message? If it came from heaven, how can you say, no man knows it's okay? That's what needs to require the word. And that person should be put to death. And that's how he's going to spew this church out of his mouth by his own word. He doesn't meet those words. He can't just, you know, this message of them, I think I said to you before, I have never written more than the whole book. This is a fact, factual book. There's no, I think, I believe, it's my opinion, I feel, the way I see it, not knowing the book. It's all word. A to Z word. Anybody who disagrees with it is disagreeing with the word. Anybody who can read that is just say, no man know it doesn't make any, it doesn't make any difference, all that kind of stuff. That the church says, you know, it doesn't matter if he's born a Christian or not, as long as he's born. It doesn't matter if he's in the grave three, three nights, as long as he died for my sins, I'm just happy. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter. It matters a lot because it costs him a life. That's what, makes, that's what matters. And you're going to call him a liar and not going to back it up. You're going to die for it. Yeah. He said, I'm going to take this church and spit it on my mouth. I'm not going to do it with my word. I'm going to require the words from them that they're holding on to against the words I gave them from heaven. Yeah. That's something more. That's just, that's just a, a mini, a, a, a mini microcosm of his judgment later on. And they reason with themselves. 
You see this? Now, this is a question. Is that a hard question? Simple question, huh? But they come so put them on the spot, so I ain't gonna put them on the spot. They put them in a real hot white spotlight. <laughs> they gotta get a little football help. <laughs> Reason what I'm saying. If we say, so I'm saying from heaven, then he's going to say to the answer. He will say unto us, why did you not then believe him? What's God saying? A message from me must be believed. There'll be no excuse for not believing it, he's saying. But we should say, a man, which he knows the wrong answer. We for the people. If we said this temple where we, where we just called Jesus out, and said that John's baptism is a man, they're going to kill us. And we're afraid of that. We're afraid of people. Because all hold John as a prophet. And they answer Jesus and say, we cannot tell a lie. It's a big lie. They show up there and it's like the whole priesthood lying against so We cannot tell. And he said to them, neither tell my you about what authority I do these things. Can you can, 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 would you love to be there for that scene? Yes. It's what's the whole priesthood, like cower down and go, want to get away, you know, come on. <laughs> and go. He's still teaching. He basically dismantled the priesthood at once with one question. The baptism of John. What's he going to do? He's going to dismantle this church with one question. Do you believe no man know? I'm going to say, we say, yes. We say, no, we don't believe that because of the word you give it. He'll say, then why did you believe it? And believing it doesn't mean a mental assent to it. Believing it means preaching it. I got a sister who is in the ministry. She preached recently at the Aztec Church. And everybody's saying, oh, she's good. I'm not getting this to her. I heard some other reports. The current pastor had. The last pastor they had. I said, you know what? I remember she's the last time one of the preachers there was not a pastor. She said, Oh, he preached that man. I mean, he preached this. Let me tell you something. Man. Let's get the record straight right now. If he ain't preaching a rapture, he ain't preaching. Right. Simple as that. I said, That's the last message God gave to a prophet in that church, and they got killed in that church. Anybody else who's preaching that church, by preaching that right message, they're not preaching his word on okay, how good they are. Yeah. That's pretty look around. Did you preach on the rapture? I know that's the machine preaching. Yeah. But we'll ignore God's message because we can. But when God calls on the carpet, he's going to say, the prophets at the top of my, of my delivery system, whatever it is I gave him, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher is obligated to prove it right or wrong, prove it right, preach it. You cannot ignore the message because that's what you're going to preach. You can be good as all get out. <laughs> He's going to judge them for their good message and their good preaching. I'll return. Yeah.